Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo. Today, I'm excited because we're starting a brand new series. I've been playing through career mode recently, which has been great. But while building Maple Leaf Wildlife Park, I started feeling really restricted by the limitations of that scenario. Like, I couldn't manipulate the terrain or find the animals I wanted in the park. So after finishing up there, I decided to stretch my wings with a new series, building my own custom zoo and sandbox. This time I'm doing it exactly how I envision it. But if you're a fan of our Planet Zoo career mode series, don't worry because we'll still be moving on to that this Thursday. So after looking at some other zoos and talking to some creators, I decided to do something really special with my zoo. I wanted to do something I've never done. And as you see here, I started by creating a parking lot. Now, I didn't build this whole parking lot. I got it off the Steam Workshop. Anything I use from Steam will be linked down below. And if you're new to Planet Zoo, which I know many of you are, you can find a ton of awesome assets on the workshop. I highly encourage you to go check it out. Going into this, I knew the exact type of zoo I wanted to build, so I set to work. Funnily enough, one of the creators I had talked to apparently has done something very similar. And I do highly encourage you, if you have not already, to check out Sparrow838 here on YouTube. She has some amazing builds that will definitely inspire you, and I'll put a link to her channel down in the description. So definitely go check her out after this if you haven't already. So as you can see here, I started off creating a custom fence, and this is actually going around the employee parking. And then what I'm doing here is actually creating a gate for that fence. Something that I thought could look like it actually worked, even though we know in the game it's definitely not going to work. And so as you see, I'm actually going to make it straight across. And then I had the idea of, well, maybe it needs to appear like it can open. Or maybe one of the uh, one of the employees forgot to close the gate. So I'm going to rotate it around just a little bit. And then I'll really struggle right here with trying to get that able to connect back to where it was supposed to so it looked like it was actually helping to support the gate without extending the wood up to an unrealistic level so i'll finish that up here in just a second but i i did want to kind of make it look like it was an actual working gate even adding handles and trying to get those to act right <laughs> Here I'm back working on the parking lot and just go ahead and restriping the parking lot because it didn't have uh, stripes everywhere that I wanted it. And now I'm in the US and I don't know about the rest of the world, but where I'm from, the uh, dashes or the stripes in the roads, they're yellow. So I'm going through and even though the white does stand out nicely, I think the yellow pops against that nice dark background. And here you just see I'm. Um, giving some additional handicap signs and changing the handicap signs to blue just to kind of uh make it stand out a bit more now the foliage in this didn't match what it was that i was wanting to do so i went in and i started removing all a lot of that and so i'm going to be working in the taiga biome again just because that's what i was doing in maple leaf and that's where i really got the idea to do something all on my own so here I'm just changing all the plants out, copying them over. I'm going to copy them onto each and every every one of the beds throughout here. Because each bed did not have a place for a tree. And I wanted some symmetry throughout the park. Now here you can see me trying different trees and trying out different things to see what will work. And one thing I didn't want it to be was too repetitive. Now I get a little repetitive with the smaller trees throughout. And then again here. But my thought was and you don't really get a good view of it i'll show you when we do our walk around here in just a minute but if you were driving in you would want something visually to be able to break your sight line so you don't have guests that just decide to drive straight through the parking lot to the front door you know and in real life that actually happens something else that i was kind of cognitive of during the build was trying not to use the exact same thing right next to each other you can see right there i didn't do an excellent job with that and that may be one thing i go back and take a look at because if in real life if one tree becomes diseased the disease will quickly spread among the species killing everything in the area so i wanted to try and 
change that up a little bit. You did see a minute ago, I put in some uh, planners and then dropped some lights down into the planners. And then I went through, this is back over in the staff parking area, which I wanted separated. I didn't want the staff and the guests to sell, share the same parking lot and putting in some lights and things like that. Just trying to make the area feel a bit more realistic. Now this by no means is going to be a super realistic zoo by any stretch of the imagination. I, I could probably do that, but I would drive myself crazy trying to do that. Here I am just adding some signage and I thought it would be a, a great way to really let everyone know that this is going to be staff parking and I ended up changing it up a little bit here at the end but let me know down in the comment section what you think do you think it turned out okay should I have gone with smaller letters I kind of like it especially at the end where I add a bit more detail to actually make it look like a sign and it's not just flat of course, have to get the letters just right. And there we go. And then adding some additional detail, which you see is not difficult. And here we are back at night. I uh, went into night mode to look and see what the lights look like and decided the park definitely needed some additional lighting because that's how it would be in an actual park. Your guest area would be very well lit. You would have uh, you would have a lot of guests and they would feel uncomfortable to be in your park after dark if it wasn't properly lit. So this is definitely something that I wanted to do the last time in Maple Leaf Wildlife Park was be able to really manipulate the terrain. And I'm glad I got the opportunity to do that. So I have a just a placeholder fence sitting between the, the actual parking lot and where I wanted to terraform just so I knew that I wasn't going to get too close and then i struggle with the rocks like always i struggle with my rocks <laughs> if anyone knows a great way to make rocks look a bit more realistic please definitely let me know because as you will see here i struggle with them but i end up changing the colors and i think it came out okay it doesn't look fantastic but we're actually going to have an animal before they even get into the park we're going to have a super secret animal right here and just checking to make sure that this w contraption would actually hold water also unfortunately my computer or not my computer but my recording software decided to lose a large portion of this and that's one reason why we are going to do the walk around here in just a minute is because you don't even see a third of everything that's being created um, in this quick little time lapse I decided to do a time lapse because, uh, yeah, the parking lot itself took about four and a half, five hours to create, and I didn't figure anybody wanted to sit through all of that. I wouldn't want to watch someone struggle with a parking lot for five hours. But as you can see, the uh, the actual entrance, the first entrance, is actually sitting out there, still just kind of in the field all by itself, and then. I decided if I was going to have an area where it looked like a truck was actually going to come into the park or the staff were going to be opening gates to allow things into the park, why not create like a delivery location? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm actually creating like a small warehouse where the truck could drive in and actually deliver a load. Now this is probably much, much smaller than an area that it would actually need to be able to do that. But uh, again, not going for the height of realism here, just going for a bit of fun and some things that I've never done before. So I decided to make the warehouse out of the, the metal siding pieces just because around here where I live, that is the majority of what you will see for the uh, for warehouses. It's cheap, it's quick to erect, it's easy. So a lot of places around here will use that. And of course, I do end up recoloring that here in just a minute. But I also wanted to change up the interior. I didn't want just the same black asphalt looking floors. So I ended up doing a more of a gray concrete and then putting up plaster around. So you can see my little archer man sitting over there in the corner. Uh, that is definitely one of the one of the things that you need to grab off the steam shop if you have not or off the workshop if you have not, because 
it is the exact height of a guest and it will definitely help you to get things a bit more to scale. So this right here, I'm just building a custom shelf and then I'm gonna decorate it up a bit where it looks like maybe they're storing a bunch of stuff in here. Maybe things that they don't use all the time. Maybe things that only get used occasionally or maybe they've been sent things from other zoos that they don't really use. I don't know. I just found a bunch of really interesting clutter pieces from the conservation pack. So I decided to uh, let my imagination run a bit wild with that. And so you'll see that here in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and be quiet now because this is literally about to wrap up and then we'll go on a quick zoo tour. All right, hey there, and let me be the first to welcome you to Unnamed Zoo. And we'll get to the <laughs> Unnamed Zoo part of that in a moment. But as you can see, we're actually facing back towards the, uh, I guess what would be considered the very front of the park. I wanted to actually create a road kind of coming in. And that's why I was thinking about the sight lines and vehicles going straight through the trees. And so this is the guest parking area. And there were some things that I actually did that did not make the time lapse. Once again, if I showed you everything that was in the time lapse, it would just be way too long and nobody's gonna wanna sit through that. First of all, you can come up here and you see that we actually have some bike racks and that's for the guests that decide they wanna bike up this way or maybe some staff bike up this way. And so we have custom made lockers right there for, uh, for any of our guests to use. So these are our spawner locations. They're actually gonna come in from the bus stops or yeah, the bus stops. I thought originally about putting them in the bus. Unfortunately, they just wouldn't fit in the bus. So we do have a total of four. We have two down on that end and then we have another two right down here. And by the way, you definitely do wanna stick around to the end because we're going to be adding a super secret animal to our zoo. It's going to be our first animal and uh, yeah, you'll definitely want to see that. So hang tight. And if we come around this way, and this is once again where you'll see our uh, staff parking. And if you noticed in the video, there was a opening right here. And this is uh, basically an unsecure location where the staff can walk in and out of our out of our zoo. So this is something else that did not make it in. These are basically additional containers for, uh, for storing things. You know, you always need plenty of storage and maybe that needs to be down on the ground a bit. There we go. But yeah, we have two different color ones. We have a uh, yellow one and an orange one. And then if we go into our warehouse, which you've already seen pretty much complete, I think I was actually putting in some of the clutter when, uh, when OBS decided to stop recording. But yeah, this is just a bunch of stuff that you know, maybe they're storing maybe some out of commission Jeeps that they use around the park, or maybe even they are in commission and uh, they can go in and out through that door. And uh, I'll show you that area in just a minute because that definitely did not make it in either. A bunch of cardboard, cardboard boxes and stuff like that that they'd store because, you know, the animals love playing with cardboard boxes. So this area is kind of like a animal receiving area. Maybe this is the actual quarantine. Now there's no gate, so it wouldn't actually work as a quarantine. You know, in this mode, you can actually tell I didn't put that all the way down at the ground. That's interesting. But yeah, just big old concrete room with a bin, a couple of water hoses, uh, a shovel and a pick and a broom to really keep the room clean. 
and keep everything clean in here. There's also no lights in here. That's something uh, I still need to do. Uh, this has definitely been a work in progress, but I hope you are enjoying it. And no door there either. So this right here is uh, going to be filled with water here very soon. And we'll come back out past our gate. Here we have a bunch of staff that I fired. Ignore that. There is actually a path that connects to that. You just cannot see it uh, because the path is a null path that runs under everything else. And the bridge had to be a little bit higher to be able to allow access. And so, yeah, this is a bunch of stuff that I ended up firing uh, because I actually had a blueprint of something that I created a long time ago. And I utilized some of the things from that blueprint and uh, it just happened to have a ton of concession stands in with it. So all these people populated as well. Uh, and here we are at the very entrance of Unnamed Zoo. And the reason that the zoo is unnamed is because I don't want to name it. I want you to name it. So definitely leave me some names down in the comment section. Try to make sure this will fit on the sign. And definitely, definitely keep it family friendly. And I love the uh, the way the mountains are in the background. And so if we come around here, uh, we have a couple of information stations right here. So one on this side and one on that side. And then just some really interesting scenery type pieces right here. In the very beginning, of course, our uh, entrances. And then through here, I created this little pergola type thing. I want it to be covered, but at the same time, feel like you are still outside. So that's kind of what I came up with. And then, of course, a couple of restrooms on either side. And these were the scenery pieces that uh, were in with another uh, blueprint that I built all that time ago. But I thought they would work really well in the zoo. And this one and that one over there as well. And changed up all of the uh, all the plant life in them too. So a couple of restrooms. If you come around this side, there's nothing as of yet. But there will be something out this way soon. So by next week's episode... Uh, there will be quite a bit out this way and all of this will continue. I created this floor and I thought, I think it looks really good. Uh, my first time actually creating a custom floor and actually kind of proud of it. So we do have a staff room right around this side. And then on this side, it's the exact same. So there's a staff room right over there. There is no negative impact right through here for our guests. And then over here, which I haven't finished with the plants there just yet. So I did utilize one of the new souvenir shops here. And I think it's pretty cool looking. I uh, I did want to do something a little different in here. Of course, there's no lights in here yet either. But I really wanted the store to feel really, really full with lots of merchandise. And there is some repetitiveness to it. I tried to keep that to a minimum. And really think about some of the some of the zoo souvenir shops that I've actually been to and think about how things are laid out. You know, you would have your glassware mostly up front where it's being watched by someone because typically they would have a you break it, you bought it sign right here. And each cup is like ninety nine dollars and then just a couple of mats right there. Of course, have to be nice to our uh, to our staff. So they have really nice ergonomic mats back here as well. And then wanted to do something really different with the wall. So I ended up using that same uh, wallpaper that I used. I don't even remember when that was with our PFAL. I think that was the maple leaf wall. I think that was that same, uh, that same one the first time I did that. And so I utilized that. And then this piece of the new age construction stuff. And I think it really gives it some, uh, some interesting look to it. And then I purposely built it in a way so that there would be some overhang from the uh, building itself to really create this uh, bit of flowering area over here. This right here would be where our guests would enter and then they would go out to the park. Then when they're finished for the day, they would, if this was real, leave going this way. So they would have to pass the shop, the souvenir shop, and then leave going out this way. However, this is Planet Zoo and we know that doesn't work like that because if you have a way in, like this they're gonna they're gonna come in here so i may end up removing the path that's actually underneath this at some point just to prevent guests from coming in without paying but again this is sandbox so it really doesn't matter so what my plan is for out this way is maybe a bit bigger of an information station where maybe guests have come in they can all congregate right into the information state center see what animals are available in the zoo maybe get a map to the zoo and maybe this is where they would pay for anything additional in the zoo maybe if the zoo had uh, shows or different things to go to 
that's what's eventually going to be out this way as of right now. But yeah, let me know what you think about this down in the comment section. All right. And then here we can get kind of a sky view. Now, these are really cool. I do want to say that this is this is definitely something I really like. I found these on the uh, Steam Workshop as well, and it was a whole set of uh, solar panels. There was like 90 of them in the pack, and you could lay them flat. You could have them elevated just however you so choose. And I thought it really looked cool. And maybe maybe the zoo is really, you know, they care about animals and they care about the environment. Maybe they're really concerned about their eco footprint. So enough about all this. Let's go ahead and get into what we got in here to do. And that is to create, <laughs> that's just an extra piece of uh, pathing. If I need it, I can just easily copy that over and then add it to other places like there where it has none. But let's go ahead and jump into this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in our first animal. So this is what I said stick around for. So let's go into zoo and then we're going to go into staff and let's hire one caretaker and a keeper. And really and truly, I think that's all we need for now. Yeah, we don't need anybody else for now. <laughs> and you can see all the staff that I fired and they just haven't been able to leave the park just yet feel kind of bad about that real quick i'm gonna go ahead step away set up the work zone for these two and i'll be back in just a second okay and i'm back with you so as you can see i did go ahead and drop down a staff room this is all extremely temporary for now uh but you know while i'm thinking about it and while i'm thinking about it being temporary as well i do want to go into uh facilities so i'm gonna just set those two right next to each other so that uh, my animal has a, uh, a proper little life over here. All right, there we go. Now that that's done, and also we'll hire a mechanic as well and let him fall down to the ground hey. and oh, come back here, sir. We're going to put you in work zone number one. That will be renamed much later on. So now we do have a mechanic and we've got a caretaker and a keeper. And yes, we are aware that we have no vet. This is actually already set up and you can see that there is actually a a barrier around this so there are a few mods that i'm playing with and one of them being um hidden gates so the gates are hidden themselves so when i create something like this i don't have just some random gate sitting out here so let's go ahead and add in our animal our keeper should be hightailing it over there in just a second looks like they're just gonna lackadaisical gonna walk over there our uh, caretaker is definitely getting it. So let's go ahead and speed some time up a little bit to get these animals put in. I love how it just sits on the uh, sits on the ground. It'll actually go into the water here in just a second. Of course, it can swim along the ground as well. There we go. Into the water you go. So I added koi to this because I thought it would be really cool to have a koi pond as soon as you enter that. And I am a huge fan of koi fish. And I know several people who are a huge fan of koi fish. Now, in this in this environment, it would not be realistic to even try and keep them. Even with the water temperature regulator, it just would not be realistic to try and keep koi fish in here. But I think they look really cool, especially when they stop swimming on top of the water and actually start to dive under. Oh, we are getting guests in our zoo. That is not what I wanted. Let's go ahead and close the zoo for now. All right, sorry folks, unknown zoo is closed. You'll have to come back another time. But yeah, for now, I think I ended up putting like 15 or 20 in here. They only require uh, 11 feet of water. So even though, uh, even though there's a lot of them, they have way more space than what they need. And go underwater, little boy, there we go. All right, and they're still bringing them out. Like I said, there should be like 15 or 20 of these little dudes but there we have it our first animals in unknown zoo and we'll go take a look at them in just a second as soon as they stop bringing them out i've got this on three times speed so they should stop here in just a moment all right and there's the last one going in now and finally going under the water so i actually did do quite a bit of research on koi because i've never owned koi myself uh i've known some people that have owned them where i live but i've never owned koi and so I did quite a bit of research to find out realistically how much room does koi need? And I was surprised. Apparently the number is like three feet, which seems really small to me. But in the game, uh, they need like 11 feet. And as you can see, their terrain is okay. There is probably some issues with a few things, which I will go in and fix, but I'm gonna do that off camera. 
they are happy with the amount of plants and they obviously like aquatic and tropical plants as you can see they do have way more than enough room even for the amount of them that's in here and they have plenty of uh swimming area and all that so they are pretty happy they do not need any hard hard shelter but uh yeah i thought it was kind of interesting the one thing that they do want as far as uh as far as an enrichment item their food enrichment item was actually uh the underwater fish feeder box so we're just going to go ahead and drop a couple of these down in here real quick for them and uh, you know we're just going to swim around with our koi fish here for a minute so now they should be a bit happier as far as enrichment and then uh we'll come back up out of the water we can go ahead and give them a ball which i think it would be absolutely amazing uh sounds like one of them has escaped probably not but sounds like one of them may have escaped where has it supposedly escaped from i guess we can go up here and click oh four of them have apparently escaped hello now how did you get over here and you know that's not cool because uh we don't have a path over here just yet so i'm gonna need you to not do that okay definitely do not do that not right now there we go and hopefully hopefully that's close enough <laughs> so that they can come over here and get them and uh maybe i definitely need to uh build up this wall just a bit more i thought i'd built it up enough maybe i should build it up a bit more because yeah we've already had four little escapees already there we go we'll just build that up just a bit to try and keep them in and we have another escapee already yeah it looks like i'm gonna have to raise up the rocks a bit more because it looks like uh they're just swimming up out of the up out of the rocks i may come back and actually put in a uh put in a gate as well to help with this or not a gate but i may come back and put in an actual uh an actual fence maybe to help keep them in i thought maybe the rocks would work as a natural barrier maybe the rocks are just too low i'm gonna mess around with this for a bit and see but that's nothing that you have to uh really concern yourself with so thank you very much for watching if you have enjoyed this episode please make sure you give it a huge like and if you're new around here uh don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more uh interesting content just like this with uh fish on land <laughs>